1300 303 468 is the number and for text messages 0467 842 First up to the Grampians and the climbing bans. Now the bans on rock climbing in some parts of the Grampians are continuing to cause headaches for tourism operators, particularly climbing tour operators. Last week they went down to the wire to find out if their licences to operate in the park would be renewed. And this is to run climbing tours. Now, they were renewed, but only for three months. Have a listen to this before we talk to a couple of tourism operators. This is an edited extract of an interview with Simon Talbot, who's the CEO of Parks Victoria, and he gave this interview to Sian Johnson in our newsroom. We've been working really hard with traditional owners to make sure that we we're able to um, identify appropriate sites that um, we can allow our licensed tour operators back into. Uh, it's fair to say that there are three sites out of eight or nine that have been opened up, so some aren't available for climbing. It's really important that all parties respect each other and work through those conditions. Um, they've, been, they've been prescribed you know, quite clearly about what is acceptable to traditional owners, about having people on country, and, and we're hoping that the 30 or so licensed tour operators will be able to work closely with us and, and the traditional owners to do that. Yeah, we've been made aware um, last year that they had some, some concerns about poor climbing practices and some destructive activities that are, you know, a very small minority of the rock climbing community were doing. The vast majority of rock climbers you know, are doing the right thing. However, we, we operate under the legislation, we operate under the National Parks Act and we have to abide by the Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act and we can't allow these great places to, to be degraded. The, the Grand Pins Management Plan, the, the refresh of the Grand Pins Management Plan, we're due to make a recommendation, taking on board all the reference group feedback, um, all stakeholder feedback by June 2020. Does that mean that this issue is likely to actually drag out until the middle of next year at least? Um, at this point in time, it's, there's only three months allowed for extension of licences for Summer Day Valley. So after three months, uh, yeah, we'll need to sit down with traditional owners and LTOs and see if there's a way forward. So I wouldn't want to make any recommendations. What I will say is that you know, all, all parties need to respect the country they're on and, and work closely together um, and, and keep moving forward together. So a three-month extension, more talks to come, final decisions likely to be at least 12 months away, June 2020. What does that mean for climbing tour operators? Tori Dunn is the owner of Grampians Mountain Adventure Company and uh, is with us this morning. Tori Dunn, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Thanks for having me. Tori, what's your take on this? Uh, look, this went down to the wire. We, we'd been trying to work with parks for months. We had almost zero communication from parks. There was a meeting early in June in Halls Gap where we had a we had we, Simon Talbot and some of the uh, executive officers came up and we, we had a bit of a workshop meeting. Um, but after that, we weren't able to get in touch with any of the key players at Parks Victoria. It was very stressful. I wasn't getting much sleep. Uh, and then at the 11th hour of the 11th day, essentially, uh, Friday last week, um, I think the email came through with these condition variations at around 8.30 p.m. in the evening. So it, we were quite gobsmacked by some of those conditions. Um, I also spoke to Simon face-to-face -face at this meeting in June, and I, I, I did ask Simon, where is all this going? Uh, as you, I'm not sure if you're aware, Steve, but Summerday Valley is a is a is a key place for family groups, recreational climbers, beginner climbers, scouting groups, social groups, and they've been using that site for 40 or 50 years in a really really respectful way. Uh, I asked Simon directly, "Will you be, uh, you know, will you be enforcing that area? Will signage be uh, taken away?" Uh, for example, over east, uh, there was a scouting group using it. Parks was allowing that to happen. Mm. And uh, what we saw in this mail-out was an indication that the public access to Summerday Valley is revoked as of uh, Monday, this, Monday the 1st of July. So it, it's, it's an area that has had a large amount of investment from Parks Victoria. I've been involved in working bees there. Stonemasons were employed to work there. A lot of work and infrastructure has been placed in that area to make it such a good area for group use. Um, throwing a bone to operators, giving us this three-month month extension with conditions that we find a little bit unworkable. For example, we have to call into a parks office to book a cliff. Uh, parks have demonstrated their incompetence in managing climbing. They don't seem to really even understand it. I believe Simon was quoted earlier this year as 
talking about speed bolting up boulders with bolt guns. I mean, that's not what climbing is. Mm. Uh, I'm really frustrated. I'm taking an ideological stand on this. I'm going to take my work to Arapiles in the short term until we can work out some of these issues and hopefully get the public back in there. I think it's really important for, for the health of our society so, to do so. Tori, is your, is your business not viable in the Grampians at the moment? Uh, all right. So we've seen we've seen a reduction in uh, in our bookings by 25 to 33 percent. We've had no international inquiries since all of this came out uh, a few months ago in February. Um, I've spoken to other operators in the region. Uh, this is this is affecting them equally, and not just not just direct tour operators. There's a flow on effect from the this campaign that's been run by Parks, uh, local accommodation providers. They have no bookings over, over winter when they which is a friend of mine down the road here who runs the Happy Wanderer Holiday Resort. He'll all in and speak to you. Uh, he's had no bookings for the past uh, few months. Usually he'll have international visiting climbers coming over and booking his cabins for periods of weeks at a time. Uh, it's affecting the whole industry. People with this level of uncertainty aren't travelling over to Australia to this area to climb. And uh, this is also, and this is, I think, even more more crucial to focus on, the amount of damage that's being done in this local community is massive. We've what, had, what sort of damage are you talking about? Well, all right. So you know how people make tree changes, they make sea changes. Well, if you're aware of the little township of Natimuk yep. uh, near the, near Arapolis there, it's a local success story. It's a small country town that's been bucking the trend. It's been growing against all odds uh, where other small country towns are dying. People are moving here from interstate, from Melbourne, from international places to live, to start families to buy a house to work there's a massive amount of uncertainty if climbing if, if these climbing bands extend uh people will people will move away um that, that it's it's meant i've had a I've, I've had a mental health professional come to me and say tori i'm prepared to document case cases of increased mental health uh risk to the to the local community because of these bands because, it's, because anguish, it's affecting businesses and incomes and livelihoods. Businesses, and incomes, and livelihoods, massive flow and effects. Okay. I'm, I'm a relatively small business, Steve. I've only got about 10 to 15 casual employees. There are the, there are the larger businesses out there. You'll speak to another operator, I believe, after my call. But we're all feeling the pinch. Uh, you know, we, we support families. If their work dries up, they can't stay here even if they want to. Uh, we feel... Also, I'll just address Simon directly. I, I listened to that one-minute uh, edited interview you just had with him. Uh, he said that they're doing this in Summerday Valley because of damage to cultural heritage. Now, I'd like to stress that any damage that might have been done in there was done in the in the pathworks by, Par by Parks Victoria. There's been a huge amount of stonework done in there. I was speaking to an elder from Eastern Ma last week and I, I, I said, look, what's the story? We don't want to climb on any artwork. That's not what we're about. Mm. Uh, I said, is there any artwork on Backwall, Wall of Fools, Barkwall? He indicated, no, there is no artwork in there. However, in the cultural heritage assessments that were done there, they seemed to be rushed through in one day. They discovered some rock scatter, squ rock scatter sites from quarrying. Uh, now, here's where reason really affects this issue. Climbers can't go in there, but under the current laws with Parks Victoria, walkers and picnickers can go into an SPA. An SPA is what we call a special protection area. Yep. So walkers and picnickers can go into Summerdale Valley. Now, if you, if you follow the lines of reason, wouldn't a walker and a picnicker be spending more time on the ground around these these rock scatter sites than a visiting climber who's likely to spend half their time on a cliff? Yeah. It just beggars belief, Tor you know? Tori, let, let me ask you this just finally and, and just quickly because I need to get to Daniel Earl, who we're going to talk fine, to as well. Um, in terms of, of this going on for at least another 12 months before there's any resolution or firm decisions being made, wh what does that do for your, your confidence about your business and some of the, these things you've been talking about? It's devastating. I, I haven't been up asleep the last week. I've, I've, I've found it highly depressing. I've worked in that area there for many hundreds into the thousands of days over the past decade or two. I'm, I'm probably the operator who's spent most time in there. I've seen... I've, look, it's going to damage our businesses for sure. I'm probably in the interim going to take people to Arapiles and that if, if my clients keep coming I'll try and sustain my business but it, we're feeling the pinch we're getting hurt hard we would like parks to work with us in a much more constructive way and not just treat us as a group that they inform we want to be treated as stakeholders that have a real interest in this place. Tori thanks for your time Tori Dunn owner of Grampians Mountain Adventure Company uh, and as I indicated Daniel Earl is also with us he's an operator of uh, Hanging is the, or Hangin is the name of the, the business 
And my understanding is some of his biggest customers are school groups. So again, I wonder with a three month extension and the prospect of this going for at least another 12 months, what effect that's going to have on Daniel's business. Daniel, good morning. Hi, Mr. Steve. Uh, where, where do you sit with that? School groups need a long time to book ahead. So where are things at with, for you with all of this? Uh, so, so I'd like to, you know, uh, say that, yeah, it was great to hear Tori mention uh, her opinion on all this, and I think it was really valid and uh, well-structured. And the um, For Hanging Out, which uh, my business doesn't use um, this site called Summer Day Valley as much, as a business like GMAC, uh, Tori's business. Yep. Um, but like Tori was saying, uh, it's only licensed to operators that are allowed into that site. There's many other groups uh, in the education system that in the past have had access to that site. These are university groups and school groups that run their own program. Mm. Uh, so where are they going to go? So they're, the they're, they're now effectively out of that area. That's right, and that's been the case um, uh, since, I think, uh, the start of May or, the end, or somewhere around April when the closures uh, were put in place. Um, and what we've found since then is that there's been some pressure on other sites in the Grand Pins that are used. So, uh, like, uh, I use another particular site quite uh, frequently, and, um, and my concern is that other groups are going to want to be able to find somewhere else to climb, um, whether that be uh, another destination in the national park that that hasn't been used as a climbing area, and that that will obviously uh, undergo some impact, uh, or existing sites, not the one that hanging out uses mm. um, uh, quite often, and then there's going to be a you know um, you know who's going to get in, and um, it's just a big shake up for the industry, and um, and some of the um, decisions that have been made really haven't been that well thought out. Dan- Daniel, let, let me ask you this, because it's often referred to as a climbing ban. Now, Tori alluded to the fact her bookings are down, that they're not getting internationals coming in at another uh, accommodation provider and the like. Is ban the right u- word to be using, or, or is it more about selected closures? How, how do you feel about that? Yeah, so I've noticed in the media, especially the newspapers, uh, the use of the word ban has been used far too much. Um, they are closures. And regarding the licensed to operators, uh, you know, considering that licensed to operators are still able to use that one main site called Summer Day Valley, um, there hasn't been a closure for a licensed tour operator uh, in the park full stop. So we, we, even though business is obviously being impacted because of what's going on in the media, and uncertainty, um, there has been no closure to, to the areas that we can actually conduct our business. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I'm hoping that um, there can be a, a change as far as what the media is putting out there for these closures, and, uh, and they really do have a, a massive impact on how uh, climbing is seen in the Grampians. Absolutely, the recreational climbers are, are, are you know, locked out of... Um, uh, large proportions of some of the best climbing in the world. Daniel, uh, I'll just come back around to the idea of this three-month extension to licences, but this going on for another 12 months. That's going to mean another 12 months of media reporting. Uh, it's already uh, in some sectors, not all, but in some, an angry debate between various groups. So for you as a business operator, what does another 12 months of this potentially mean to you? Is that is that the death of some businesses and and uh, you know widespread uh, interest in coming to the Grampians? I think with support from the local tourism agencies, uh, we'll, we'll be fine. In, in, since 2006, we've you know survived you know fires, floods, and locust plagues, and I, I believe that we as licensed tour operators can get through this as well. But yes, we do require that support. Daniel, thanks for your time. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Daniel Earl, operator of Hanging Out, and. Uh one of those other tourism operators in the Grampians, refers to closures rather than bans. Uh, although we did say they were locked out of some areas as well. So it's, getting the language is is difficult. Often it's just uh, it's easier just to go with a simple word. But I, I take Daniel's point.
that uh, it is more difficult for operators and there are some closures in some places, but there are still other sites that have been left and left open. Uh, a couple of a uh, couple of SMSs. Is it possible to build simulated walls and rocks? Let's say the Rappalies and the Grampians and build something for people to climb on, says Sue. Well, fair enough, Sue. Yes, it can be done, but only to a certain height, I imagine. Uh, and it wouldn't be the same as uh, climbing on natural surfaces as such. I was talking with an operator out around the Rappalies yesterday, just on the phone, not on air. And uh, that operator was expressing some concerns that if there's a lot more pressure coming on Arapiles and greater numbers, and that could lead to some damage at Arapiles, there's a review of Arapiles due to start in the spring. So that operator is worried for the future of climbing at Arapiles as well because of similar concerns around the Grampians. So there's no easy fix on this all the way through. Ten minutes to nine o'clock, news at nine. From Hamilton to Maryborough.